What is up guys? It is your boy here coming at you with kind of a chill video this time. Uh, I'm very sleepy, but I have something big in the works uh, coming up fairly soon, so keep a lookout for that. But no, this time I want to talk about something that just kind of came to me. I was scrolling through the uh, the tweeters here. And uh, J-Pop Project News, um, who I've been following for almost 10 years, probably even more now at this point, uh, they retweeted this post by Homicidals, which is well known for being like the premier blog, as far as I'm con as far as I know, of um, uh, about alt idols and alt idol culture and all that stuff. And it kind of got me thinking, you know, because alt idols are kind of known to be in like a subsection of idols that kind of goes against the grain, so to speak. They kind of know push against certain like idol stereotypes and everything like that they kind of do that to subvert those expectations naturally subversive because alt <laughs> alternative so but it got me thinking you know when akb48 first came out in like 2008 i think it was, no two was it 2007 somewhere around there it was a while ago a long time ago uh, you know AKB48 was kind of edgy back in the day honestly if you really think about it because like if, if you just, just think about it like this right so you have to look at what idols looked like in their original inception back in like the 1980s or even the 70s where the idol image was so closely guarded like protected by agencies talents weren't allowed to like idols weren't allowed to be seen going like or like doing certain things like even using the bathroom and stuff <laughs> like, like stuff like that they couldn't even like there was this idea that if they ever talked about something like using the bathroom or whatever like or or they they showed too much or or they they said something off color even like slightly or did something off color even like, anything that could like destroy the mystique of the idol and and the idea of meeting the idols was kind of like an absurd premise like of course you can't the the mysticism is in like this idol being an idol you know it's untouchable almost like a something you worship hence the you know the the name idol kind of you know idolatry in, in anyway the point when i that i'm trying to make here is that idols were kind of like this really put on a pedestal back in the day and it really came to a peak in like the 80s and of course it kind of fell out of favor for a while i mean you still had I idols in the 90s of course but it wasn't it wasn't the same uh and then morning musume came out and they were like the the you know lightning striking twice in the same place they were the only profitable idol group as far as i'm aware at that time uh you had other groups coming out uh, i mean that whole things spawned you know attempts at other idols coming out i mean including perfume they tried the idol thing link to that somewhere i'll probably put a card to that i, I really like that video uh, <laughs> my own video <laughs> no but uh yeah you know but none of those idol groups even perfume really took it wasn't until like after perfume kind of gave up the idol thing that they became popular but then AKB48 came around and their whole, like, shtick, their, their catchphrase at the time was idols you can meet. And that was, like, that was their gimmick. You couldn't meet idols back in the day. Like, before then. I mean, I guess you could, like, run into them. Or I'm sure, like, I mean, I don't know if they had backstage offense for Hello Project idols, but uh, I definitely not with the 
80s ones, at least not that I'm aware. Maybe someone will have something to say about that, but like this was the first time like idols were doing things like, you know, doing handshake events. And I know that's like a, a point of controversy now because of certain actions taken by certain weird fans like that are kind of mildly obsessed or majorly obsessed that for some inexplicable region reason seek to do harm to idols who are just doing their jobs <laughs> you know um there's a lot of but looking at it through the context of what idols were before AKB48 versus after. AKB sort of like opened that floodgate. In a way, they kind of allowed, they, they were kind of like that pioneering act for other idols to follow. They did handshake events. I mean, they were passing out flyers to their own concerts. They, they did meet and greet. Well, I mean, handshake events, yeah. But like, th- there was a lot of that kind of personalized interaction with fans that I I think was probably one of the keys to their success on top of the fact that you know they were marketed as you know being this built from the ground up idol group that you know the members were partially responsible for promotion and all that stuff like you know there was a lot going into making AKB48 and the 48 franchise of idols what they ended up becoming and kind of what they are now and the whole culture surrounding them is its own subculture within idol culture itself but they really did open up the floodgates they really sort of reinvented idols to the point that kind of arguably one could argue that it allowed alternative idols to come in i mean I know I talk about Momoito Clover quite a bit here, but I, I kind of want to bring them up because couldn't you kind of argue that for their time, they may have been somewhat of an alt idol group? Of course, they aren't now by any stretch of the imagination. But back then, I think maybe you could kind of argue that because they're, they, they kind of tried to take things a step further. Because you had a whole ton of other idol groups coming up that were more along the lines of the conventional kind of idol thing, or maybe AKB clones. And Momoito Clover kind of like, they had that period of time where they were like kind of aping the whole AKB thing, but also like trying to take it even further and like doing other things. Things that were kind of outside the realm of what would have been acceptable in the AKB sphere, you know, and like pushing boundaries. And I think that's just what idols kind of did after AKB, you know, made their their success was newer idol groups kind of pushing boundaries in different directions, kind of paving the way again for alternative idols. And honestly, I, I can't help but to feel like that that flashpoint started with AKB48, as crazy as that sounds now, because AKB48 is kind of like as bog standard an idol group as you can get, right? Not to, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about AKB48. Far from it. Uh, I'm just saying, like they, they wrote the book on what in a modern idol group is more, far more so than Morning Musume and Hello Project ever did, at least in my opinion. Um, and it's, I don't know, I just. I think it's pretty interesting. My thoughts on this are a little mm, incomplete, I suppose. But I don't know. This topic kind of fascinates me because, I mean, a few years ago, uh, my for my uh, graduation thesis in, in college, I, I wrote about idols and idol culture and what it represents in the, the greater scheme of Japanese pop culture and socioeconomic history and all that. This scope is a little big looking back for just a 20 page thing, but um, still to this day the idea kind of fascinates me and I, I like looking at idol culture from that kind of 
big picture point of view to sort of see how the culture has evolved over the years, especially with, you know, cultural waves and trends coming and going and ebbing and flowing and everything like that. It's just, I, it's really interesting to see this culture of idols that has, you know, I, I guess it's always been, at least, well, in the modern era, there's always been the battle between, well, not battle, but that that push and pull between alternative, you know, idols that kind of push the limits of or subvert the the conventions of what an idol is versus the, the stalwarts of the old guard, like that sort of thing. And it's really interesting to see. Um, and for all, for what it's worth, there's no like battle there's no war between fans of either side i don't think i don't think there's anything about these two spheres of idol subculture where you have people who are like die hard alt idol fans who just completely reject the conventional the more conventional stuff and and vice versa I don't see any infighting in that regard, and honestly, that's pretty cool. There's infighting in other places and on other issues, which I don't want to even go near in this video, but uh, it is pretty cool to see that the crossover, the, the Venn diagram of fans of alt idols and uh, conventional ones is is closer to a circle than one might maybe be inclined to assume i don't know but in any event that's all i really have to say it's kind of like a rambling thing thoughts about idols and idol history and stuff but let me know what you thought about any of this in the comments below i'm really interested to hear about it and uh i'll uh see you next time and i think it's going to be that different video so stay tuned for that Oof.